Greetings everyone, it's Fred Sweet, and welcome to Guitar Media's How to Avoid Counterfeit Vintage Guitars, as well as my guide, How to Avoid Any Guitar Scams. I'd like to start off with four types of guitars. You have the clean, all original vintage guitar. You have the poor heavily played vintage guitar then you have the clean counterfeit guitar then you have the relic or you know fake age counterfeit guitar so with the clean all original vintage guitar and the clean counterfeit guitar you really have to be educated to know the difference to really know what you're looking at when it comes to a clean, all-original vintage guitar. When it comes to a poor condition or heavily playwear original vintage guitar versus a relic or fake wear counterfeit vintage guitar, many times it's very obvious. And what I mean by that is an honest vintage guitar, like this guitar that we're looking at today, this 1969 Martin D35, it has much honest mojo and play wear. And so you don't really have to be so educated when the years just tell the story instantly. As soon as you look at it, you know, hey, you know, okay, I'm not looking at a relic. I'm looking at an original vintage guitar, whatever the case may be. You open the case it's just your your first impression a lot of times you can go with you just know the years tell the story so that's easy that's an easy way to identify an original vintage guitar without ha being super educated you know go with one that's just got a lot of play wear or maybe the years haven't been kind to it maybe there's cracks in the finish um Okay, play wear, that's something that we look for. Here in the cowboy chords, a lot of times we see divoting. And it's one of the first things I'll look for. Another thing, like I said earlier, cracks in the finish and on the headstock, I look for, depending on the type of guitar it is, because I follow personally... Stratocasters, Telecasters, Les Pauls, SGs, 335s, 345s, 355s, and the popular Martin models. And so I know, you know, I already know what to expect from the, the finishes through the years on those models because I've looked at literally hundreds if not thousands of different ones. And so I, I'm pretty much, I know where I'm at. Thanks for watching. Check our channel for our latest videos and enjoy the demo. Oh, hi. 
Welcome to the Stratocaster section of this video. Now, as far as the Martin, um, I just wanted to say that really with any vintage guitar, the most valuable era, the golden era, so to speak, are going to be the ones that are the most faked and forged and counterfeit. So with, with Martin's, you know, what they call pre-war Martins, it's kind of like the golden era of Martins, which is right before World War II. So basically, right right around 30, 1935 um, is roughly the high, that's the high point. That would be considered the high point for um, Martin, 36, 37, somewhere in there. And, and really, those guitars, you know, you need to, if you're looking at a 1935 Martin or whatever, a super, super valuable guitar, of course, especially if it's extremely clean, you need to know exactly what you're looking at. All right, so it turns out I did find a little fun fact about Martin guitars. Of course, the herringbone Martin guitars were considered the golden era and the most valuable Martin guitars and that the last full year for the herringbone models was 1946. So what we see with Martin guitars sometimes that have been misrepresented, they'll take a later Martin guitar, like later than 1946, and then add the herringbone trim around the edge. And so, you know, who knows why this has been done to so many different guitars. Maybe they just like the looks of it. Maybe they really were trying to pass it off as the more valuable herringbone model. For whatever the reason, many guitars have been misrepresented. And just because that's been done doesn't mean the dealer, maybe that's selling the guitar, wouldn't say you know that that had been done to it. So it's not always a dishonest thing. And not necessarily even a... A counterfeit just something that's been misrepresented anyways moving on to the Stratocaster the Stratocaster what we're gonna see with the Stratocaster Stratocaster started in 1954 so the 54 Stratocaster is gonna be one of the more valuable Stratocasters and the Stratocasters that predate the L plate on the back the L plate on the back is is actually a transition for the Stratocaster guitar into CBS, the Stratocasters that predate the L plate will just have a serial number without the L, and those are the true CBS Stratocaster guitars. And then, of course, the F plate 
um, some of those would still be considered the transitional um, guitars because maybe some of the parts are still, um, you know, part of the transition between the CBS era. But anyways, where I'm going with what I'm saying is the pre-CBS era of Fender Stratocaster guitars, which would which would more or less be 64 or earlier, are the most valuable Fender Stratocaster guitars. And especially really when you get back into the early 60s or the late 50s with custom colors and rare custom colors. And so you want to beware, especially with really clean condition 50 Stratocasters or custom colors really all the way up through the 60s because they are the most, you know, counterfeited guitars out of the Stratocasters. And when I look at a Stratocaster, really to avoid any scams, of course, the, the first thing I'll look for is, again, the divots in the fingerboard here and the wear on the frets. And a lot of times we see with Fender guitars, if the frets have been dressed, we'll see lines in the wood where you could see where they dress the frets or if they've been replaced. A lot of times we see little chips along uh, the fingerboard. And, of course, another thing you want to look for is the tuners. You want to make sure that that'll be one of the first things I look at, that there's not any extra holes here. And you have to, you just have to consider that <clears throat> I work construction most of my life and I work very hard for my money. So I'm not the average guitar buyer. I, I'm an extremely picky guitar buyer and I want to make a good investment. You have to consider when I open the case on my guitar, I, I want that to be a really honorable, joyous moment, and I don't want it to be a moment of awe uh, or a sigh, like, oh, this is sad, a sad moment where look at what they did to this guitar. It's it's terrible what's been done to it, that sort of thing. Um, and so everyone feels differently, but I'm an extremely picky guitar buyer, and so that's why... I want to have an all original guitar. I'm familiar with the finishes in the um mostly actually in the transitional era of the the Fender guitars, which is basically 65, 66 um and then later and I right away I'll look at the headstock and I see like a very fine checking in the finish and and this is a 65. I know you know, that's the way it's supposed to look because the finishes were nitrocellulose and they were very thin at that time. And if you don't see that, that doesn't mean that it's not the original finish, but it's something that you should definitely look for. And then another thing on the Stratocaster is the decal. And I've seen in the pre-CBS decals and the noodle decals, as well as the transitional era decals, um, what we see is a gold decal here. It's black around the edge, gold in the center. And a lot of times we'll see a green decal or a gold decal. And like this decal is actually turning in between gold to green. And usually that's what happens with time. And it's with the noodle decals, it's a little bit more difficult to pinpoint because they have less, a smaller gold area. So it's it's a little harder to tell with those. And also, I don't notice as much finish checkering on the the really early ones like uh, the early 60s and the 50s, which also makes it more difficult to tell. I have noticed that the headstock will be a lighter color. And I've also noticed that through the years on a lot of Stratocaster guitars, like I see here, a little darkening in the front of the headstock, near the tuner, in the wood, in the finish, coming up. And this is another natural phenomenon that happens through the years. And I don't really know why, but it's something to look for. Obviously, the wear here is um, is something to look for. Um, we see on these guitars, once again, a thin finish and checkering. And it just has a certain crack in the finish and a certain pattern and really with Stratocaster guitars, you have you have a lot of different eras. You know, you got the 
the black back pickup era, which is the early guitars in the 50s and the early 60s. And then by the mid 60s, you have what they call the gray backs. And if this guitar has gray backs and going on into the 70s, they also have the gray back pickups. So that's another thing that I observe. And of course, in the 50s, they have the staggered pole pieces and they're actually beveled edges. And then what we see coming into the mid 60s, we see the staggered pole pieces and the cloth wiring is something that we see right up into 1966. And, you know, that's pretty much 67 is the end of the cloth wiring. And it's something to look for if you're familiar with the different colors. That's something to look for. Of course, the consistency with the knobs, these are all matching. Of course, the consistency with the screws. Another thing I look for when I look at a guitar, of course, is if the neck's straight and the nut. And a lot of times what we see here, like with this guitar, because it has the original nut, we'll see a small amount of clear coat finish right on the side of the nut. And a lot of times that's a way to tell if the nut is original. And another thing to look for is maybe an added string tree at one point or a dialed hole here. Uh, another thing to look for is when you look under the guard to see if there's any extra screw holes. Um, another thing to look for is a lot of times on Stratocasters what we see is people will modify the three-way switch to a five-way switch. So when I see a Strat in person, one of the first things I'll do is switch the switch. And it was right around 1977 when they went 78 was some of the first five-way guitar switches on Stratocasters. Or, and let's see. Of course, the, the, the Stratocaster guitar went from a three-bolt to a four-bolt right around 1971 1972 we see a lot of four uh three bolts and 71 a lot of four bolts and you know really with the stratocaster guitars a four bolt is another mark of value because the pre four bolt guitars 71 and earlier are also very valuable so they could be suspect to be counterfeit guitars because they are extremely valuable and really that's the thing when you look at Stratocaster guitars if you're looking at like say a 66 through 71 of course they're a lot less suspect to be counterfeit because they're not as valuable as the pre-CBS models but once again when you look at the 72 to like say the current day Stratocasters those are also even that much more or less likely to be counterfeit guitars versus the 66 to 71 four bolt Stratocasters because they're not, once again, they're not as valuable as the earlier models. And so it's something that you just don't have to be concerned about. There's so many things to look for on, on a Stratocaster guitar. A lot of times they'll, they'll move the strap button. That's another thing I look for when I look to buy one. I want to see the bottom. I want to see this area the, you know where the strap button is to see if it's ever been replaced or drilled out. Bigger strap buttons um, or strap locks are put back or maybe over here. Sometimes we see um, maybe a left-hand guy was playing it or whatever. And another thing that we, we look for on Stratocaster guitars is in the 80s, of course, it was real popular to put humbuckers in Stratocaster guitars. So you want to make sure the body's not been routed for humbuckers. And uh, other than that, the grounding in the original solder joints on the pots as well as dating the pots... And Stratocaster guitars, they would have stack pole pots, and that would be a 304 code. And typically, your next number is the year, if I'm not mistaken, and the next number is the month. 
And if I'm not mistaken, it's also the same on the CTS potentiometers, which is 137 code, the next number being the year, and then the next uh, number being the week, actually. And when they started, they actually had shorter codes. And so, you know, I'm not I'm not absolutely sure right now. I, I have a separate video on how to date... Uh, vintage fender amps and that goes through all the pot codes but that's also a very helpful thing when looking for an original guitar of course there's a neck date and that's something to look for and a discrepancy with stratocaster guitars is the neck date a lot of times will not match the body date or the pickup dates or the um pots and that's very common with fender for it to be whatever six months off in a lot of cases we see a 66 neck with a 65 body uh or um typically we see you know the the neck's a little later the body's a little earlier or the parts in the body are a little later and i kind of me personally i kind of consider the date on the neck kind of like the sign out or one of the last things but we've also seen it where the, you know, the next and earlier date and, um, and the other parts are a later date. And so this is something that can be a discrepancy and something that you might want to steer clear of when you're investing in a vintage Stratocaster guitar. Because then when you go to sell it to the next person, it's, it's just one less wall that you're up against. And especially if everything is the same year, that's always good. Um, and then moving on the bridge, usually I like to go with a whammy, but they had hardtails. I like to stay away from a hardtail because to me, a Stratocaster is only a Strat if it's a whammy Strat. I mean, hey, why buy a Strat? You might as well get a telly. So I guess that's about it. Wrapping it up for the Stratocaster. Well, another thing, and it's really a personal preference is the fingerboard. I love a Rosewood fingerboard because... I get a darker sound out of it, and Stratocasters have a tendency to sound very thin, and so that's really a personal preference. All right, now we'll be moving on to the Telecaster. All right, with the Telecaster, the first thing you want to observe is the Black Guards. The Black Guard Telecasters, Telecaster started in 1952. We have 1953... I guess really they had the 51 no caster, but at any rate, the really early, early Blackguard models, and I think if I'm not mistaken, somewhere in 54, 55, they actually went to a, a white guard. Um, but those are the ones that are the most valuable and the most uh, counterfeited. And so buyer beware when it comes to original Black Guard, excuse me, original Blackguard Telecasters. Because of their extremely high value, of course, there's a ton of fakes out there. And especially if it's a really excellent condition example, this would be highly suspect um, just right off the bat. And I don't really have a lot of experience with the really early, being a working man, I never really could afford a, a real early Blackguard, but I've always wanted one. As far as the other models that are pretty valuable, any pre-CBS Telecaster, really, 1964 or earlier, if it's really clean and especially custom colors, and even some guitars are so rare that a really clean one coming up would be, I would consider it to be suspect immediately. I mean, hey, um... I, when I'm looking to invest my money, it's guilty until proven innocent because, you know, the last thing you want to do is put yourself in a situation where you put out a lot of money and you don't have a, a real authentic vintage guitar. So once again with the Telecaster, it's kind of the same thing with the Stratocaster or many other vintage guitars. The first thing I'll look at is the fingerboard right off the bat. I'm looking at the div divots in the rosewood or the maple and the cowboy chords. And on this guitar, it's really all the way up. 
And this is this is actually a great example because this guitar does have a good amount of play wear of what a rosewood fingerboard. I don't care if it's pre CBS. They st they pretty much started in '59, if my memory serves me, all the way up to '66. Yeah, I mean it's gonna you know it's gonna wear like this is a Brazilian fingerboard, so it's gonna look pretty much like this, even on a clay dot. Of course, the clay dots are are different than the perloid dots. Um, something to look for, you know, with Telecasters that have original frets is you want to be careful because they came with small frets to begin with. And of course, if the frets are wore out, it's something to consider. You're going to have to replace them or dress them. And they were already low to begin with. So it's just something that you should consider when you're looking to invest in the guitar. Of course, like the Stratocaster... It's the same thing. You know, you look at the tuners, you want to, um, there's the era, their era of tuners. Now, I'm not exactly sure, but I know in the 50s, they had these Klusen box tuners with the lines with, with, that didn't say Klusen Deluxe. And then sometime along, maybe through the 60s, they started to actually say Klusen Deluxe. And the, the box tuners and the bean tuners, this is actually a, a 1967 with an F plate. And so a lot of times in 67, we see the F tuners. Of course, this particular guitar, being the transitional model that it is, has uh, what would be considered the transitional decal and um, the Klusen tuners, which is really cool. It's never had the F tuners, but that would be something to, to look for um, a, You know, if it was changed from... F tuners to clue sons, whether they're vintage ones or reissues, um, and the holes that would have been left, a uh, totally different screw pattern. Same thing with the strap buttons. You want to make sure that your strap buttons are original and no no additional holes there. When you look at the finish on these guitars, this is a discrepancy, and I didn't really go through this with the Stratocaster, but what Fender would do with their finishes is a lot of times we see uh we see sunburst and then we'll see a custom color over sunburst and this is something that they they would do from the factory or we'll see really strange stuff like uh, olympic white and then sunburst over olympic white and really it's left a lot of people scratching their head for a lot of years because a lot of times when you see these multi-layer finishes it's just it's real apparent and real obvious that the finish has been on the guitar since day one and it left Fender that way. And, you know, it's crazy it is as it is. That's the way it was. Well, as an investor and from an investor standpoint, this may be something you want to steer clear. Because when you go to sell the guitar, that may be a wall that you don't want to have to necessarily hurdle, you know. And so <clears throat> what you can do is just buy a Sunburst or maybe a more common custom color that that doesn't have a lot of layers now i've actually run into this is what i would call finished discrepancies on fender guitars and it, and it's it's really sad but this this guitar is actually olympic white and i've had people um come up to me and try to tell me it's blonde and fender did a see-through blonde on their Telecaster guitars. And if you look closely at the finish, you'll notice that it's actually on a lot of see-through blonde guitars, it's not see-through around the edge. But then of course in the center it is see-through. And on on some some blonde finishes, you, you know, they're completely see-through. So I guess it would be maybe opinionated on what's considered see-through blonde. To me, that's the whole point. That's the whole reason why Fender did see-through blonde or blonde is, is so that you could see the wood to the finish. And, of course, this being an Olympic white has yellowed. Some people would say it's yellowed nicely. Um, this actually, it's very interesting the way the Olympic white through the years changes colors and is really inconsistent on the back of the guitar and the way the finish has responded to moisture this is just a very honest example and really no question marks here. Um, you know, there was a sticker on the front of the guitar at one time, this butterfly or moth here. And of course it's left its um, stamp through the years. 
with Telecaster guitars, the early models have what I call the mud switch. And what this means is in the bridge position, you have your tone is operating and your volume is operating. In the middle position, you have these two pickups operating with the tone operating and the volume operating. And then in the neck position, we have just the lipstick. And on a mud switch, the tone doesn't operate on the lipstick in the neck position. It's just the volume and you have a very muffled sound and it's kind of like a faux bass guitar tone. So the very, very early Telecaster guitars, I've, I've heard they said they had a pine body and then a lot of them are ash. And after looking at this guitar is actually seven pounds, 11 ounces. I thought at one time that it was alder, but a lot of um, lighter Fender guitars are alder in the wood, but I looked at the, you know, I looked really closely at the grain, and now I think, I actually do think it's ash. So, um, I don't know. If anybody knows about pre-66 Alder body Telecasters, they, they can just leave it in the comments. Um, I think that would be very interesting. Um, as far as the wiring on, on these guitars, they had cloth wiring before. 67 and before 1967 and then later in 67 they went to the rubber coated wiring when the cloth wiring and the was done away with and they went to the rubber coated wiring they also did away with the mud switch and that means that you now have a beautiful clean tone in the neck li uh, lipstick i call it the lipstick position um even though it's not a lipstick pickup um and of course they sound great well, so that's the upside. The downside is if you're a rock and roll guitar player, a lot of those guitars are very microphonic and squealy guitars. And um, something else about the Telecasters, for many years we see in the early 70s, they had a surplus of 1966 potentiometers, CTS pots, and it's not uncommon to see a 68, 69, 70, 71 with, with 66 date codes on the pots. Well, the Telecaster was a four-bolt guitar, and they never went to the three-bolt Telecaster. So really, the, the extremely valuable Telecaster models are pretty much the pre-CBS models, 64 and earlier. And those are going to be the most counterfeited uh models and definitely the ones to look out for and then with telecaster guitars they had so many other models like the thin line and the deluxe and the custom and really those guitars you know the thin line the the 69 thin line is the most valuable out of those and i think they had a rosewood and a mahogany one and so that would be something to look out for as far as the Deluxe, you know, they're just not that valuable. As far as the Custom, of course, the Telecasters with Binding, the early Telecaster Custom, that that would be suspect. They're, they're super valuable guitars and something to, to definitely consider. When you get into, you know, when you get into the 70s, you know, the, the guitars, most of them are just not valuable enough to even be suspect. You, you're pretty much playing it safe then it's really just a matter of how original the instrument is and not if it's counterfeit because it's, it's very likely that it's that it's um not counterfeit all right moving on to the sg no the les paul <laughs> 